Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone from snowy Bend, Oregon. That's why I have a Hawaiian shirt on because I'm freezing to death here. So you have to go this way. When it, you got to do something, it's my version of a rain dance. <laughs> Get it to stop. Anyway, my job as your, your evaluator is to take a look at the overall meeting and then also the performance of our individual evaluators, hopefully offer input that can improve our process in the evaluation in general and in specifics. Back to you, sir. Thank you so very much. Our next functionary is our word of the day. And also she's the grammarian and the odd counter. Let's start with the word of the day, Ms. Victoria Trabosh. Thank you, Captain. I would like to remind you that whenever a plane takes off safely and is in the air before they start serving water, and if you're first class, maybe something to eat that's halfway decent, you have the sense of gratitude. And that is my word of the day today, gratitude. Gratitude. And gratitude shows up in small and large ways. So I'm going to encourage you. I'll put it in the chat. I'll add it to my name. And I want to encourage you to use the word of the day in some form and also to think about gratitude. We are certainly grateful for our three guests today, Barbara Allen, Suzanne Rondu, and Kimberly Tyler, Taylor, sorry. Thank you all for being here and back to you, Captain. Thank you. Also the grammarian today is Ms. Vicki Trabas. And I'm back. <laughs> the thing is, I'm listening to see if there's anything you say or do that actually gets in the way of your words. My friend, John, I'm not sure what your role is. I think that a chief stew in the cabin, John, he already has a connector word. He's going to love me for this. I said, never. He uses and, 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 long sentence. He would never say a sentence that long if he was speaking it, but that's his connector. And it wasn't bad. It's just a small connector. I'll be looking for connectors. I sew constantly. You'd think I'd have better clothes, how much I sew. So this, so that, so that. Sews. Yes, thank you, John. So when you are speaking, watch your connector words, watch your ahs and ums, and watch your double clutches. When you, when you say something twice, those are the things I'm going to be counting. And if any of you were here two weeks ago when Shantae did this role, be prepared to be disappointed with my presentation. She knocked it out of the park, which you can see in our Zoom recordings. Back to you again, Captain. Thank you, Victoria Chavaz, but you should not downplay yourself. You're one of a kind. Our counter, how grateful for we are to have Vicky Chavaz to be our odd counter. The, you can unbuckle your seatbelts now and enjoy the ride. Mr. Captain, I've, I've covered that too. All right. Oh, well, now the you. excitement really happens because Vicky's up to tell us how we spoke grammatically. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. I have such gratitude for this group. Did you hear, did you all really hear how well people spoke today? What you said, Dave, about not hearing a lot of ahs and ums, Literally, maybe I scared everyone when I picked on John before I even got started. I don't know that anything must be flawless, but that was one of the most well-developed meetings I've ever heard from a gram grammar standpoint. I heard the word gratitude used somewhat, but what I felt even more than the word was the feeling of gratitude. I really felt that people were present today. And two things I want to talk about rather than ahs and ums and it just wasn't an issue, was pace and pitch. Super important in a speech. And two people I want to really commend for this are our two speakers. Because when you speak for a long time, it's easy to flatline it or start to speed up or not be well paced. And to Vincent, Vincent, you have excellent diction. Your words are so crisp and clear but I have made you today the pace king. You kept dropping these ideas on us and giving us space to think about them. When you said my father was part of this adventure, he helped to create a new city. You didn't just keep going. Your grandfather was part of the circus. Those of us just exploded in our heads thinking about that. I thought, cool, grandpa, that one. But your pace, and when you said, can you imagine that? Yeah. And you left us room to imagine. Excellent job. 
the pace, the pitch queen today was our very own Muriel. Muriel, you've been telling me about this movie since the first weekend you saw it. But as Judith spoke to, you really sold it today. I, I, tell, I told you I'm going to take John. This, this, we don't go to movies because, you know, there seems to be COVID still around. But that's okay. We're going to double mask. I'm going to put him in a hazmat suit. We're going to the movie. Because your pitch, when you talked about certain things, you raised your voice a little, not too much. You didn't get all, you don't speak this way. But when you would say things that you'd seen a movie 17 times, and this movie since September, nine times, that pitch really lets us know it's important to you. Fellow Toastmasters, when you hear speakers like Vincent and Muriel speak, and you listen for pace and pitch, like I was doing, which wasn't, I wasn't intending on it, but Vincent really set it off when he began to speak. I thought, wow, these are the elements that great speakers know, and these are the elements as evaluators we should consider. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Vicki. I believe the next one up is me. So off we go. A, a couple of quick things about evaluators today. I would suggest to all of my evaluators that one of the most pleasant things about it was each of you started with something that was genuine, sincere, and positive about the speakers that you were evaluating. There's a lot to be said for, and it builds the gratitude in this group that it's a warm and an affectionate place. And yet, when you have that positive moment to start your evaluation, then when someone suggests to you that you could stand up, someone suggests to you that you could show more body language, it comes with a softer blow. It's not as though you're smacked over the head. I do want to hear, hit on a couple of things that I thought could be a little bit better in our presentation just as a group. Um, the first thing is was brought up uh, in our conversation of eye contact. When you have something that you can't memorize, try to put at least your notes as close to the camera as possible so that at least it looks like you're trying to communicate with us rather than the top of your desk or something off to the left or something off to the right. David, when you did table topics evaluations, you told us there's going to be three elements and I'm not, I got lost where they were. And it's all good, but I'd love to have heard what they were gonna be, then tell us what they are, and then tell us what you told us and stick with that. We only have two to three minutes. And then finally, some structural issues that I'd really like to talk about. First of all, we had some transitional issues at the beginning of the meeting that were on the fly fixes. We didn't have you here, David, and so you would have been amazed at how well the crew that you've trained immediately picked it up and took off and ran with it. And I get it, I totally get it. But if you have a major role in this group, if you're a speaker, if you're an evaluator, it's a great suggestion to show up 10 to 15 minutes early and make sure you have the lay of the land. Oftentimes we see when our president, it didn't happen today because we didn't have shared screens, but oftentimes we have difficulty with shared screens. And that 15 minute window where we warm up and get ready in the kind of a waiting room environment is a great place to make sure you've got that set up for yourself. The second one, of course, would be Vincent, your camera went away and I love you for it, brother, because your soft, soothing British voice just makes me think I'm listening to the BBC. I just sat back and Lordy B, I love listening to that. And I just wanted to comment on that. And finally, just a nitpicky little deal for our Toastmaster today. When you called for 90 seconds of silence after our first speaker, I thought I was mourning our first speaker and I didn't want to mourn him. I wanted to praise him. So that's all I have for you today, fellow Toastmasters. Back to you, 